The family had an intervention to stop me from buying more tools and to slow my obsession. However, the rules didn't state that I couldn't make this panel gauge slash beam compass. I decided to make up two beams, one at 450mm and a longer one at 850 ripped up at the table saw, plonked in the vise and planed up all four sides, certainly checking all is square. I measure out the beams to the required length and create a knife mark around all four sides with my new marking knife, hence my condition, and create a knife wall. With the aid of a bench hook, I allow the saw to find its place against the knife wall and concentrate on the vertical cut, then clean up at the shooting board. The nephew was kind enough to give me some black wood when he wasn't looking, which was roughly dimensioned at the table saw, then all cleaned up with a plane, squared up as possible, to give me a good foundation to start with. A fancy profile is drawn up onto a template, cut out, shaped and transferred over to what is known as the fence. I lay out for the rebate along the base and set a mortise gauge to mark out where the beam will be located and like a goose I show you footage at the top of my head. I place the mortise gauge on the same registration face to line up the through mortise hole. After all the marking out was complete it was to the drill press to remove the bulk of the mortise then chiseling back to the gauge lines coming in from both faces to create a neatest possible fit for the beam. The profile is cut out at the bandsaw, cleaned up with a spoke shave and scraper, which I'm still kind of learning how to sharpen and use. At the table saw, a rebate is cut out on both sides of the fence and cleaned up with a shoulder plane, something I don't use much, but it's nice to have and use. The mortise needed to be opened up a bit more to accommodate the beam plus a brass strip which can easily be picked up in various sizes at hobby shops. A block squared up, double sided tape and sandpaper help to dial in that nice fit. The brass strip gets cut to length, cleaned up, folded 90 degrees on one end, sized to the fence and the other end folded to create a tight fitting pad so the thumb screw doesn't mar the beam. I grabbed one of these thumb screws online and after finding centre I decided to use one of these stainless steel thread repair kits. Being wood a hole was drilled just under the recommended size for the tap. The hole bored and then tapped out to size. The steel thread was inserted giving me a thread that will not wear and it worked really nice. Decision time came. Do I leave the fence as is or line it with brass wear strips? The brass one because it's shiny and shiny tools look good. The brass gets cut and sized close as possible. I roughed up the surface of the glue side of the brass strip for better adhesion. Mix the epoxy applied it to both the fence and the brass strip and clamped it all up. Having made the brass strips a bit fat, I could then file them down a size, then with a bit of auto polish and steel wool, give it a bit of a buff. A round over was put on the edge so it was nice to the touch, and it was now time to work on the beam. A simple hole was drilled to accept a pencil, then centre found on the end of the beam, drilled to suit the tap in the thread repair kit. A thread inserted, now I could use another thumb screw to hold my pencil in place. For the cutting blade, I borrowed the end piece from my dad's cheap handsaw, and then just cleaned it up with a file. Drilling a hole doesn't work, I found out the hard way, so I used a pencil grinder to get a hole started in the middle of the blade, then got in there with some needle files and formed a slot for some adjustment. Then it was to the grinder to create a rounded bevel for the cutting edge. A block of wood 
double-sided tape help me flatten and polish the blade as I work through the grits. Then I awkwardly sharpen the blade. A notch was created to house the blade. Those two small wooden shoulders would unlikely hold up to any sideway pressure put on the blade. So again with epoxy, brass was added to the face and cleaned up. Once again center was found, a hole bored and a thread tapped. The steel thread was inserted so the blade could be secured by a bolt. I lay some brass strips on both sides of the beam and then file the notch out so that the blade nests with a neat fit, adding support for sideway force that the blade will endure. It was only at this stage the brain kicked in and I thought of using the panel gauge as a beam compass as well. After the head was cut off a bolt, a point ground up and another hole with a steel thread inserted, I could insert this pin when needed to lay out a circle or an arc. A coat of finish and a polish, some assembly and time for a test run. The gauge gets to be used in the traditional way and now I can cut a baseline parallel to the opposite edge or whack a pencil in for a darker line to suit my old eyes. Now I had the option of inserting the pin and a circle can be marked out. To lay out an arch, a strip of masking tape is placed down the centre of the bench and with the panel gauge, a centre line is drawn. The workpiece with a corresponding centre line is clamped square to the bench. The required radius can be measured. The pin located on the centre line and the arch laid out. Overall this was a great little build. It satisfied my tool obsession. And now the OCD will kick in as to where I'm going to store this. So until next time, make sure you get out there and make and create. And thanks for watching.